the Hampstead Theatre Club, London. Avis Bunnage and Ronald Baddeley in Stringer's Last Stand by Stan Barstow and Alfred Baddeley. Have you got the table laid, Bessie? I'm on with it now. Well, don't take all day. Your father will be here any minute. And he doesn't like to be kept waiting, I know. Ma'am, do we have to have these? Have what? These plastic flowers. They look awful. They don't convince anybody. They look real to me. It's not as if you ever change them. It's spring all the time in this house, from April through to Christmas. Mm, I don't know what you're going on about. Oh, look, there's your father now. Look sharp. I'll go and get the stew. Oh, get out from under me feet. Now what's the dog done to you? You want in me way. When I come home from our day's work, I don't want to have to stride over that fat, useless lump. Is it ready? What's up with him, then? Oh, you might well ask. Now, for goodness sake, don't start getting his back up tonight, Bessie. I've had a splitting headache all day. It's ready when you are. Stew, is it? And dumplings. Aye, all right. But don't say you don't fancy it. You were only asking the other day when we were going to have it again. I said all right, didn't I? What do you want, a song and dance? You'll have to go, you know. Who'll have to go? That dog. I hope I don't hang on long enough to get in his condition. I wish I thought somebody would have kindness to put me quietly to sleep. Oh, yes, you can talk like that now. But life's sweet. Mm. More than you can say for these dumplings. I don't know why. I made them like I always do. Then you must have been heavy-handed. Dumplings need a light hand. Is there out else you can find fault with while you're at it? I'm telling you, uh, dumplings is sad, so as you'll know for next time. If they'd been perfect, you'd never have said a word, I suppose. Mm. Well, if I expect me grub to be perfect, you've not but yourself to blame. I think that's a compliment, Mother. Oh, near us, he'll ever get to one. It seems I'm in trouble, whatever I say. Did our Marjorie take Neville to the hospital? Hmm. Yeah. The specialist said there was not much wrong. He gave her some drops for his ear and told her to take him back in a fortnight. If you ask me, strange running out there. She's your daughter, Luther. No, oh, I don't mean on her side. Our Marjorie's as strong as a knock. She has bairns like a chicken lays eggs. No, I'm talking about Jim. He's not but size of six pound of the copper. I wonder sometimes where he gets the strength. It's no wonder he looks pasty. Luther! And it's not as if they'd been wet all that long. There's time for another dozen, the way he's shaping up. I don't know why they can't lie fallow for a bit. You think he'd have found out what causes it be now? Luther, I do wish you wouldn't talk like that in front of our Bessie. Well, she's a grown woman, isn't she? If you'd talked a bit more to our Marjorie, she might not be where she is now. Five bairns in as many years. It's, it's too much of a good thing. Well, youngest is nearly three now. Ah, uh -huh about time she was stubbing her toe again. If it comes to that, what about our Carol? There's eight years between our Bessie and her, so you weren't so clever. Well, our Carol was a bit of a surprise, but she's a grand healthy lass, and clever with it. I reckon she could tell us a thing or two. Mm, it's to be hoped she's got common sense and all. I can't rest with her away at university and television showing nothing but drugs and student rights and demonstrations about everything under the sun. That's protest, lass. Any road, I sometimes think our uh, Bessie's got most of common sense that we're handed out to this family. She's biding her time. Though I think she might be leaving it a touch late if she's got any real intention. Our Bessie'll get married when she's ready. Uh. Don't mind me. Just go on talking about me as if I'm not here. You're not getting any younger, Bessie. I'd be a freak if I did, wouldn't I? Nobody gets younger. Anyway, like my mam says, I shall get married when I'm ready and not before. As long as you're not ready on your own. I'm not short of choice. You'll get shorter as folk get fed up of waiting for thee. She is engaged, Luther. Ah. Uh, Did Bob say anything about coming round tonight, Dad? No, he didn't. Didn't he mention it at all? I haven't spoken to him all day. Well, that's funny. And him working right next year. Is there something up or what? You might say that. They've sent him to Coventry. But that's miles away. Will he get home at weekends? Oh, Mother. What do you mean they've sent him to Coventry? Just what I say. But whatever for? I didn't work yesterday, did I? No, you didn't, but... I didn't work yesterday because we had a one-day token strike in support of wage claim. I didn't work, and none of the other union members worked. Bar Bob. He went in as usual. And you mean that none of you's talking to him just because of that? Aye, just because of that. Well, it's downright childish, that's what it is. 
Nobody talking to me because he worked yesterday. Now look here, Bessie. What do you do with your lass when, you, when you've no time for her? Well, well I... Come on, come on, be honest about it. Well, I suppose I don't have anything to do with her, but... That's but... right, and when a lot of men feel that way about a chap, it's called sending him to Coventry. You don't mean to say you've fallen in with it, Luther. Oh, I have that. I'm in with men. But Bob's my fiancé. Aye, uh, and my future son-in-law, I'm sorry to say. I must say, it does seem a shame that you should treat your own daughter's fiancé like that, Luther. Now, look, Bob's a member at Union. When Union negotiates a rise in wages, Bob gets it. When it gets us an improvement in condition, Bob gets that and all. But when Union calls for a strike action, what does Bob do? He goes to work, as usual. Now, I don't like a chap what does a thing like that. And when I don't like a chap, I have no talk with him. I'll bet nobody gave him a chance to put his side of it. He's got no side. There's only one side to this for a Union member. He should have stuck with rest on us. Well, that's a proper mess. And now I don't know whether I've got to go and meet him or he's coming here or what. Oh, I shouldn't think he'll have the cheek to show his face in here tonight. Hello? Anybody in? Huh. Looks like you can think again. Hello, oh. Bob. Uh, evening, Mrs. Stringer. Hello, Bob. Our Bessie was just wondering whether you'd be coming or not. Oh. Your dad's told you about it, then? Ah, yes. And I told him how childish I think it is. Like a pack of school kids, they all are. Uh, flock of sheep, more like. All falling in together. Aye, all together. How else do you think a union can work? Oh, you talk to him now, then. I'm asking him a question. How else does he think a union can work? I don't know, and I don't care. I'm fed up with union and everybody in it. Well, that's a lot of men. And there's a fair number of them fed up with Elad. Then he wrote, and they'll not be bothered with it for much longer. How do you mean? I mean, they'll likely call for the card before long. Well, good riddance. I never wanted to join in first place. Why did you, then? Because I couldn't have the job unless I did. I was forced into it. I am for why. Because we don't want a lot of scroungers and wasters getting benefits while we pay subscription. Who's calling me a scrounger? Don't I do as good a day's work as the next man? I am better if it comes to that. Aye, that can work. I'll give you that. But there hasn't common sense that were born with. Sense? I've enough sense to think for myself and to make up my own mind when there isn't an independent man amongst the rest of you. That's what I mean. All this talk about independence and making up your own mind. They like it, you know. It's playing right into their hands. Whose hands? The boss's hands. They like chaps that's independent. Fellas that don't agree with anybody. They can get them on their own. And then they haven't as much bargaining power as a, as a rabbit with a ferret on its tail. I don't listen to bosses. I watch telly and I read papers and I make up my own mind. Well, I read strong papers then. They'll be telling me next their vote's conservative. No, I don't. I vote liberal. Liberal? Good saint of dance protectors. And is this chap as you're going to wet, Bessie? As far as I know, he's me fiancé. He'll be a fiancé without a job before long. Why? He worked, didn't he? It's you lot they ought to sack, not Bob. Ah, but you see, they can't sack us because there's too many of us. With a hundred percent shop up at Crosslands, and men will not work with a fellow what in union. And your Bob won't be in union for much longer, or I'm a Dutchman. Well, if that isn't the limit. I do think it's a crying shame that a young chap should be victimised just because of his principles. Oh, you keep your nose out, Gladys. This has got not to do with women. It's so much to do with our Bessie. Your own daughter's young man, and you're doing this to him. Hey, don't blame me. There's nought I can do about it if I wanted to. And you don't. I've said all I have to say. Well, I've something to say now. It doesn't matter what your flaming union does to Bob. He's heading for better things at shop floor and being bossed about by a pack of tuppence ain't any workmen. Hey, uh, shut up, Bessie. There's no need to go into all that now. I think there is. I think it's time my father were told a thing or two. Who does he think he is, anyway? I don't suppose you know that Bob's been taking a correspondence course in accountancy. Mm -hmm. And I don't suppose you know that Mr. Crosland himself has heard about it. And that he's as good as promised Bob a job upstairs in the costing department if he does well in his exam. Oh. What do you think about that, eh? I'll tell you what I think about it. I think you'd better take that young fellow out of my house and never bring him back again. So, he works because he doesn't agree with union policy, does he? He thinks we ought to have wage restraint, does he? He's thrust me up with that tail, and now you tell me it is angling for a job on staff? 
It wasn't his principles that made him go in yesterday. It was because he wanted to keep on right side of management. Calm yourself, Luther. You'll have a stroke if you get so worried. I'll have a stroke if ever I see that, that scummy black leg in my house again. Well, you might as well know I shall marry him whether you like it or not. Not at my expense, you won't. Oh, come on, Bessie. Let's be off. I will go. You better see if you can control him, Mother. He's yours. This one's mine. Bloody hell. You know, you'll do yourself no good getting worked up like that. And I think of all football matches we've been to together. Well, now Bessie can wed him if she likes. She'll go her own road in tendon. She's too old to be said by me. But she's no need to think he's welcome here in future. And what's more, I, I won't stand for you having a mint toss together when my back's turned. You hear what I'm saying, Gladys? You're not to have that young fella in here again. Oh, for heaven's sake, will you shut up? Have you gone daft? I shall go daft if I listen to you much longer. Well, that's one of the dinner service plates you've just chucked on floor. I know it is, and I don't care. You can pay for it out of that rise the union's getting you. And you can pay for that one as well. Hey, I'm gone. And as for me, I'm going round to our Marjorie's. I shan't be making any supper, nor any breakfast tomorrow. No, nor any dinner or tea neither. I'm starting my one-day strike now. You can look after yourself. And you can talk to yourself for all I care. You're not feeling badly, are you? What's come over you? Principal. Thirty-two years of it saved up. Well, by bloody hell. Well... I might as well go where I can find somebody that knows what I'm talking about. Come on, Bob. Is it all right? Of course it is. There's nobody in. My mum's probably round at our Marjorie. Mm, it's not her I'm worried about. Oh, we shan't see me dad for a bit. He'll have gone round to the Greyhound. They'll all be talking about what big men they are and how they can make the bosses sit up. Oh, I don't like coming in here behind his back. I live here, don't I? I've invited you. I can take care of me, Dad. Don't worry. <laughs> Grown men acting like kids. It makes your blood boil. Nah, leave them alone. They'll come round in time. Aye, in time. You're reading papers about some chaps being in Coventry for years on end. Well, then, I'll either stick it out or, or I'll look for another job. The trouble is, they'll very likely take your union card off you. Then you might not find another job in a hurry. And here's us saving up to get married. Oh, silly daft men. They cause all the trouble in the world. They wouldn't be half the bother there is if they let women run things. Oh, what makes you think that? Because we've got more common sense, that's what. Hey, you'll have to put up for counsel if you think that way. Huh, I'd have to join some damn silly political party before they'd entertain me. Anyway, let's forget it for a while. <sighs> Ain't it a mess, though? Oh, it'll all come out in wash. Come on, sit down here. Oh, it's all right, you talking like that. What are we going to do if you lose your job? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps Mr. Croslin will give me that staff job if there's any trouble. Aye, and perhaps he'll let you go to save trouble. Oh, no, no, he's a, he's a decent sort. I don't think he'll let a crowd of workmen intimidate him. I could see me letting him if I were boss. Hey, you better not let your daddy hear you talking like that. You go off the deep end. Say you're a traitor to your class or something like that. Oh, I know how to stand up for me rights, don't worry. But there's a difference between that and this sort of silly carry-on. Well, let's not spoil our evening, eh? Come on, sit down here. Oh. That's it. I wonder what's on telly. Oh. Never mind telly. Come here a minute. Mm. Oh, let's see. Oh, that's lovely. Just a minute. Oh, what's up, Bessie? Well, a cuddle's a cuddle, but we'll have a bit less of that. Ah, Bessie, we are engaged, aren't we? Happen so. But I'm not one of your permissive society women. I want a wedding ring on my finger before I let a fella take liberties with me. Well, I wasn't thinking of it as taking a liberty. I thought you were enjoying it as well. You know what thought did. Oh, be reasonable, Bessie. You're an attractive lass, and I love you. I don't know how long we'll have to wait until we get married. Don't you ever feel... No, I don't. I mean, don't you ever feel that you'd like to? That's for marriage. In the meantime, you'll just have to control yourself. They don't call me Alice Green. Eh? What's Alice Green got to do with it? You used to knock about with her, didn't you? She was always free and easy enough. How do you know she's free and easy? I'm only telling you what's common knowledge. 
I always found Alice a nice enough lass. I don't know why you want to start calling her names. I'm not calling her anything. She hasn't been called before. And why did you pack up with her if you thought all that much about her? I'm not saying I think out about her. All I'm saying is that you are calling her names, and I've always found her to be a nice enough lass. But you did finish with her, didn't you? Well, no, she, uh, she finished with me, if you must know. She threw me over for a chap she met at a dance at Bradford. So, I've got to be content with Alice Green's leavings, have I? Oh, Lord. You know very well it's not like that, Bessie. I think a lot more about you than I ever did of Alice. But all the same, she gave you more fun than you get with me, eh? I didn't bring her into this, you did. Oh, what the heck's come over here, Bessie? You're in the right mood tonight. Aye, I am. I'm sick to death of men, if you want to know. What with men acting like bairns and men what can't keep their hands off you, so wonder women have any patience left. There's our Marjorie's husband. At her till she's going to have more kids than the old woman what lived in a shoe. And me mother, putting up with me dad's domineering ways for 32 years. Well, I shan't have it. It'll be 50-50, give and take, when I get wed. And I shan't get wed till that's understood. It's as well we're getting to know all this. Now I can see who wants to wear the trousers. It's not a question of wearing trousers. But I intend to know where I stand. It's a woman's right to know what she's letting herself in for. And a man's. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, it looks as though we'd better set it all out on paper. Draw up a marriage charter, like, with all the rules and stipulations and agreements. Mm, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Ah, and what kind of marriage would that be, with one or the other of us claiming breach of contract every other day? It'd be a fair arrangement. Ah, ah, I can just see it. I must be taken out twice a week, and... And I can claim time and a half for washing up after half past six. And you can't come into the bedroom without clocking in. You want to get your dad to help you draw it up. It's just this cup of tea. Oh, you've no need to be sarcastic. It's watching me dad carry on. It's made me think like this. Oh, no, it's not. It's being his daughter. That's what it is. You think you're like your mother, but you're not. You're the spitting image of your dad. You've got no sense of humour for a start, and he's famous for it. Do you know what the lads call him up at the works? Smiley Stringer, they call him, because he's never been known to see a joke. You talk about him and his pig-headedness and domineering ways, well, you want to have a good look at yourself. If that's what you think, I'm sure I don't want to hold you to anything. And I'm sure I don't want to wed a female Luther Stringer. Well, that settles it, then. You can go and see if Alice Green will have you back. I don't care. I don't think I shall have any bother finding somebody else. You're not the only pebble on my beach. Oh, I never thought I was. I mean, there's, uh... Yeah, uh, and then there's, uh... Oh! Here, you can have your ring back now. I won't wear it another minute. And who the X back? Oh. oh, hello, Bessie. Oh, it's you, Jack. This is a surprise. Won't you come in? Oh, I was wondering if I could have a word with your dad. Well, come in, come in. My dad's out just now. Oh. He'll be down at the ground. Have you tried there? No, I thought I'd call here first, seeing as how it's on my way. I... Oh, uh... I didn't know you'd be in on your own, like. On my own? Oh, that nonsense. Well, you men. What do you think that is sitting over there? A waxwork? I suppose if Bob got up and punched you on the nose, you'd reckon it hadn't happened. Well, there's nowt personal about this, Bessie. You can't kid me with that nowt personal business. Of course it's personal. And you're all enjoying it at bottom of you, taking your spite out on somebody you know. I don't need you to stand up for me. Oh, I see. Now, look here, Bessie. It's got now to do with you, and I don't want to discuss it, if you don't mind. If your dad's down at Greyhound, I'll have a walk down there and see him. Well, seeing as I'm on my own, I'll come with you. Oh, well, uh, I'll take you down and buy you a drink with pleasure, Bessie. But I shan't be able to stop with you. Have some business to discuss with your dad, you see. Oh, never bother about me. I'll find somebody to talk to. And you and me can have a little chat on the way down. It'll be rather like old times, won't it? I hope you know what you're doing, Bessie. Did you say something, Jack? No, I said nout. Funny, I thought you said something. <laughs> it's stopping in on your own that does it. You start hearing things after a bit. Oh, my flipping maiden aunt, women. All right, I'm ready when you are, Jack. Right, all right. I'll then. leave the light on and the door open for me, Mother. Ah. Keep around at our Marjorie's. Well... That's a right out you do. What am I supposed to do now? Should I switch the light off and slip the light or what? <laughs> It'd be a laugh if they all found they were locked out, wouldn't it? Stop arguing, Bessie, will you, and come in. Oh, bloody hell, I can't face that lot. I'm for the front room. Where were you off to with Jack Harper? He called to see me dad. I told him he'd be down at the pub and then I said I'd have a walk down with him. You set off out once with Bob. Where's he got to? 
Oh, he had to go early. To do his studying, you know. I say. All the same, I don't see why you Look, have to... are we going to spend next half hour driven on about our Bessie, or are we going to get down to brass tacks? Well, why couldn't you let her go about her business? I don't see there's any need to bring everybody into it, Marjorie. Oh, Bessie isn't everybody, ma'am. We can't talk round at our house with Jim flapping his big ears and kids crawling all over everything. Besides, our Bessie will have something to say about it. I don't know what our Bessie's supposed to know about such things. Our Bessie's a grown woman, ma'am. That's the second time I've heard that tonight. Will somebody please tell me what I've been dragged into the house for? Look, I don't think... What? That... Oh, nothing. Look, Mother, I know you must be upset, but we shan't get anywhere be sweeping it under the carpet. We've got to talk about it and decide what to do. Marjorie, if you aren't the most maddening woman I know... Well, I can't get a word in edgeways, can I? Do about what? About me dad. What about me dad? He's got a woman. <gasps> you what? I'm telling you. He's got a woman. Or at more than one. Marjorie, there's no call to let your imagination run away with you. You'll have him running an harem next. How do we know there isn't more than one? Hey, Marjorie, I wish to God I'd never given you a damn suit. You're rushing on like a bullet to get, not giving anybody a second to think. I know what I think already. I, I expect you do. What's me dad's suit got to do with, with what you just said? That's how I found out. Me mum asked me this morning if I'd pop me dad's suit in as express cleaners in town. Well, I was taking our Neville up to hospital. She knew I'd have a while to wait, so I could call for it on my way back. You know how much messing about there is. You're making a point. Will you get to the point? I'm coming to it. Well, I thought when I was in shop, I'd just feel and make sure there was no note left in the pockets. You know how you do. I mean, my mum can't have done it, or... Well, I thought I had. Aye, well, you couldn't have. Anyway, I did. And it's a good job I had my back turned. If that last behind counter had seen, I'd have not known where to put my face. But what on earth did you find? Well, no, Marjorie. You wanted her in on it. You may as well tell her now. This. Electronically tested. What is it? Come on, Bessie. You can't be so green. I don't see why not. Oh! Oh, I... Say there. Aye. No wonder you had a funny look on your face when you called in with our Neville. I remember thinking so at the time. Well, I mean to say, I'd have a chance to think. Like I told you, it did cross my mind that you and me dad... Never. My Marjorie, I'm past the age where I need out like that. In any case, me and your father, well, he's always been very considerate since our Carol were born. We've managed very well without the upstairs work. You might have. They do them up neat, don't they? The oh, mucky things. I wouldn't have one in the house. Hey, there's only two here. There should be three. That's right. The old devil. Steady on, Bessie. I'd like a bit more proof before you start calling him names. I don't know what more proof you want. Well, we don't actually know, do we? Perhaps there's a simple explanation. Such as? Well... Maybe he was looking after them for a friend. Mother, I know it can't be a pleasant fact to face, but face it, you must. What I can't understand is who'd... I mean, at his age. Oh, there's many a good tune played on an old fiddle. <laughs> and when does he... It must be on nights he goes to dogs. Happen he doesn't go to dogs at all, but sees her. Happen he takes her to dogs. The old devil. The thing is, what are we going to do? He wants facing with it, that's what I think. Well, I'd just like to know a bit more about it, that's all. If I didn't have Jim and Bairns to see to, I'd follow him and see just where he does go to and who he goes with. I'll follow him. I'll get to the bottom of it. Me own father. My God. When I think of all the years he's laid the law down and browbeaten all of us. The best years of me mum's life, they were. Aye, and now they're all thrown back in her face. Think it's disgusting. I think men are disgusting. No, Bessie. No, Bessie, you can't lump them all together. I can if I want to. No, Bessie. Your dad's always brought his money home and seen that everything was right to you. And he'd never find Jim doing a thing like this. Your Jim's got enough on his plate at home, if you ask me. What do you mean by that? I mean, if anybody thinks I'm getting wed to a man that either bosses me about and carries on behind me back, or one that wants to breed like a rabbit, they've got another thing coming. I don't care if I like sound of that. Oh, will you two stop fratching? Your father will be in before long, and we're still no foreigner with what we ought to do. Face him with it. That's what I say. I say, get to know who she is and where she lives. I must say, I'd like to know a bit more. If it were husband and mine, I'd get to know all I needed to know by throwing the flaming things in his face and seeing what he had to say for himself. I happen so, but you're not me man, Bessie, so just shut up a minute while we have a think. What about putting kettle on for a cup of tea, Mother? Uh, that's not a bad idea. Now then, you've come back then? Aye, I've come back. Oh, Lord, there's my dad back already. And what's this, then? 
A meeting at Women's Union? Aye, we thought it was time we got organised a bit. Mm, not so. Not so. Well, if that's a cup of tea you're making lettuce, I'll join you. I don't suppose that comes under the embargo, eh? Oh, go and mash it yourself if you want some. And put enough tea and water in for four. Aye. It's all right. Marjorie, where have you put them things? They're here. Well, you'd best put them out at road. Here, you take them. I don't want them. Here, Bessie. What can I do with them? I know. Put them back in his suit. What are you doing that for? Wait and see. It'll boil in a minute. Right. It's cold out tonight. Did uh, Jack Harper call you earlier on? Yes. I told him you were down at the Greyhound. Ah, somebody said he'd been looking for me. I must have been in the club while they were there. What's me suit doing there? I asked our Marjorie to pop it in at cleaners. Oh, I didn't know it wanted cleaning. I thought it did. Ah, oh, well, happened so. You didn't leave any power notes in, Dad. That'll be the day. Ah, right, well, uh, I'll take it and I'll, I'll put it away. There, then. He knew they were there. Did you see his face? The old devil. Now are you convinced? I suppose I have to be. What do we do now? I don't know, but let's not talk in here. Is that kettle boiling, Mum? I expect so. Right, let's go into the kitchen. I can think better over a cup of tea. Blimey. Poor old Luther. What the oh, hell? Uh, I thought I made it plain that I don't want to see your face in this house but, again. But, Luther, I've, I've, I've got something to tell you. I I, I've, just, I've just overheard something, something that's very important. Not something you ought to know about. I, I, I was in the front room. Look, lad, I've got enough problems of my own. Just give me a couple of words, that's all. Right, two words, bugger off. Oh, all right. If that's the way you want it. I wonder. Well electronically tested or not, if they've been through the dry cleaners, there won't be much use now. Whatever did you want to do a thing like that for? Oh, that's better. I was miles away. I don't suppose my dad said anything yet. No. Our Marjorie said not to let on that we knew anything, so I haven't. It's a strain, though, Bessie. I don't know that I can stand it much longer. Maybe you won't need to. What time did he get in last night? Just after midnight. I reckon to be asleep. I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to listen to his lies. We'll find out a bit more about it anyway when our Marjorie comes round. What time did she say? Well, she'll have to wait till Jim comes in to see it at Bairns, so it'll be 12 or after. I'm wondering what she told Jim last night. I said to her, you can't just go out of the house for two or three hours in an evening without a reason. But she said not to worry, she'd think of something. You should have gone, Bessie, if anybody had to. Huh, you couldn't trust me to control my temper. Have you seen Bob lately? Not since that night. Isn't it time you were making a move, then? You'll pass his house on your way to the shops. He knows where I am if he wants me. Of course he knows where you are, but does he know you want him? I mean, there's only a chilly welcome here. What with your father and all? If I bump into him in the street, I shan't ignore him. But I'm not eating humble pie. I mean to start as we'll go on for all our married life. That is, if we do patch it up. You find you can't plan that far ahead, lass. Most men like to feel they've got the last word. You're saying that because you've always let me father have his own way. I've always let him think he was getting his own way. And it's worked very well. Up to now. Granted. Up to now. I can't help wondering what she's like. You'll know soon enough if our Marjorie's done her detective work properly. Oh, I only hope he didn't spot her. I feel as if 12 o'clock will never arrive. It's like waiting to go down for an operation. Oh, who can that be? Carol, whatever are you doing here? Hello, Mum. I thought I'd come to the front door and give you a surprise. Hello, Bessie. Hello, Carol. I didn't think you'd be on holiday for a couple of weeks yet. I'm not. I just suddenly felt like coming home for the weekend. It's good to see you, love. Take your goat off. Kettle's on. It only needs turning up. There's nothing wrong, is there? No, why? Should there be? Huh. Just seems funny for you to be home when you're back for Easter in a fortnight. Well, that's it, really. I've got a chance to go abroad with some friends at Easter, and I knew Mum and Dad would be upset if I didn't put in an appearance. 
So on the spur of the moment, I thought I'd come down. <laughs> what it must be like to be able to just pick up and go where you please, when you please. You're as free as I am, Bessie. I've got a living to earn. And I've got a degree to get. You can get a job almost anyway, can't you? You've got nothing to tie you down, except maybe Bob. It's how you look at things. You're a lot freer than me in that. I've got a dull old nine-to-five job, and I work all day with a lot of other dull old nine-to-fivers. It'll soon be my turn. But you've at least been away for three years and learned to spread your wings. I'm nearly 30, and I don't expect I'll even flutter mine now. Why don't you just up sticks and go off for an holiday, you and Bob? We're saving for the house. Oh, we were. What's that? Oh, nothing important. I'll be off. Aren't you waiting for a cup of tea? No, I'll not bother. Don't forget our Marjorie's coming. I won't. What did she mean about Bob? Oh, they've had a little tiff, that's all. I don't know how they go on like they do. They've been going steady ever since I went away to university. Well, they're saving up to build out. And building up a lot of frustration with it. I haven't noticed. Oh, Mum, you know what I mean. Our Bess is in a terrible rut. She doesn't seem to be able to do anything on impulse anymore. I can see what they'll have together, if ever they do get married, that is. A planned kitchen, a planned garden, a planned budget and a planned family. What's up, Mum? Is something wrong? No, no, nothing. I know there's something. I could smell it as soon as I walked in. What have you been up to? Look, love, your father was out late last night and he's only just getting up. And the dog? Aye. Now, he'll be down any minute. Will you do something for me? Go on. Well, it's rather hard to explain, really, but uh, I've got a surprise for him. Something I don't want him to see. For his birthday? Yes. No, that's not till August. No, it's just a surprise. And what is it? Wouldn't be a surprise if I told you, would it? OK. What do you want me to do? Well, he'll be going down to the pub like he always does on a Saturday dinner time. But I want him out of the house by a quarter to twelve. If you could manage it, say, uh, say you'll walk down with him, but you've got to be at the post office by twelve or something like that. You can manage something, can't you? And our Marjorie's in on this as well? Well, yes. Listen, that's him coming now. Not a word. Shh. Well, now, what's this? Another mouth to feed? It's a good job I don't take you seriously. I didn't know Easter fell a fortnight early this year. I begin to think visits are rationed. You ration them, love, not us. How did you get here? I itched. On your own? Honestly. You'd think the world was full of people whose sole intention was to rape young women. In daylight, too. Carol, you shouldn't talk like that. Well, really. Listen, I stood on the roundabout on the A1 for nearly 20 minutes. And none of you wild young men pulled up. In the end, I was taken pity on by a kind old lorry driver. You can't trust anybody these days. <laughs> he was as safe as me dad. That's what I mean. What? I mean, uh, I mean, you can't go by appearances. You never know with people nowadays. I know a bit about people. I'm studying them, remember? Die, you read your sociology at college and think because you know a few facts and figures, you know all. But there's not to beat a bit of experience. I didn't say that. But you can learn something from facts and figures, as you call them. And what I've learned is that the world's a better place for knowing. I can't spend my whole life distrusting strangers and thinking I'm going to be cheated or seduced by every man that comes along. You have to trust people. I know I'm young, but I do know quite a lot about them. I talk to them all the time. And I'll tell you something. For all your brains and education, you're just like other women in one respect. What's that? You talk too much. Oh, well, if that's settled, I wish you'd all get out of way and let me get some vegetables on for dinner. It's getting on for a quarter to twelve. I haven't finished cleaning up yet. Oh, uh, right. Um, are you going down to the ground, Dad? Aye, I'm all but ready now. Is there a new tie you've got on? Uh, this? Oh, aye, I, uh, I saw it in a shop window to the Saturday. Took a fancy to it. Very smart. You'd better watch him, Mum. I haven't seen him in a new tie for years. Mm, takes people in funny ways. Eh? Spring. Your shoes are by the hearth when you want them. I've given them a rub over. Eh? Have you? Aye. Uh, well, you don't want mucky shoes when you've got a new tie on, do you? No. No, I uh, suppose you don't. I don't like to see a man become careless with his appearance as he gets on a bit. When he dresses well, it shows he's still got an interest in life. Hmm. Suppose you're right. Are you going to match this afternoon? Aye. Uh, Will you be out late? No, I think I'll get to bed early. Hmm. Happen you're a bit tired. Too many late nights aren't good for you at your age. I don't know why you keep harping on about age, woman. You put years on me. Here's your coat. Are you trying to get rid of me? No, just 
just being a dutiful daughter. Aye. It's all right. They're in the sitting room. Oh. Hello, Carol. Oh, hello, Bob. Ah, oh, it's nice to see you. Um, I'm sorry, Luther. I, I thought you'd be out by now. Well, I'll be seeing you, Gladys. Oh, is that silly daft behave you're still going on? Tis as far as my dad's concerned. Aye, I'm beginning to feel like the invisible man. What's it all about? It's a union job. Your dad's not speaking to Bob, neither is anybody else at work. You mean you're in Coventry? Mm. Oh, but that's terrible. Oh, it's funny how soon you get used to it. You begin to live inside your own head. Well, <laughs> it's not as if most people have much to say worth listening to, is it? Carol, I thought you were going to walk down with your father. But he's gone anyway now. That's not the point, is it? Oh, you mean you want me out of the way as well? If you can wait to run a comb through me air. Hey, can anybody join in or is it a secret? Mind your own business, Bob Carter. <laughs> I didn't know Bessie had gone out to meet you, Bob. I didn't. I went for some cigs. I bumped into her at the corner, so I... I thought I'd walk back with her. Nobody asked you to. Why don't you two stop fracturing? There, you'll have to ask Bessie that. She's talking to you, isn't she? She wasn't on the way up here. I say, I say, my girlfriend hasn't talked to me for seven days. You're lucky. My wife hasn't stopped for seven years. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Well, that's a reaction at least. Bessie, it's nearly 12 o'clock. Uh, wouldn't you like to walk Bob back home? Oh, I'm in no hurry. Ah, well, you see, Bob, our Marjorie's coming round. You won't want to listen to a lot of women nattering away. Oh, I don't mind. It'll make a change to hear people talking. Uh, but, Bob... Can't you... you take a hint? Oh, you don't want me to stay. It's all right, Bob. They don't want me either. I'm going down to the post office. Why don't you walk down with me? And I'll give you the privilege of buying me a coffee. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I think I'd like that. Shall I, uh, see you tonight, Bessie? Usual time. I don't know. Well, I'll be there anyway. Come on, Bob. I'm right glad you're home, love. That you want to get rid of me. OK. See you later, Bessie. I think so. Well, I thought that was going to be awkward. Oh, Carol would just walk in like that. No, Bessie, we're always glad to see her. The thing is, are we going to stop her from finding out? She already knows that summit's up. We'll cross that bridge when we hear what our Marjorie's got to tell us. Aye. Mother! Oh, you're here, Marjorie. You've timed it well. Almost too well. I had to bob in for entry as they came out the front door. What's our Carol doing at home? Does she know about it? That she doesn't. And I don't want her to. It's bad enough you two knowing. Well, come on, Marjorie. Tell us the worst. They say. It all went like clockwork. Now, you're sure he didn't see you? I shouldn't want him to think we were spying on him. Talk sense, ma'am. After what he's been doing to you. Start at the beginning, Marjorie. Well... I got on bus. The half past seven? Ah, that's right. That's the one he always catches. I knew he'd be upstairs when he could have a smoke, so I waited at the next stop, in shelter. And when the bus came, I nipped on smart as she went right up to the front, downstairs. I was wondering how I could get off without him seeing me. But as luck would have it, he went all the way to the terminus. And I waited a minute before I went after him. Where did he go then? He went up King Street. At first, I thought he was going to the dogs. He's going to the dogs, all right. Bessie. But he went into the first pub. You know, the one they did up posh just before Christmas. The crown, you mean? Aye, that's the one. I'll crown him. Anyway, I couldn't see throat window, and I didn't dare go in for fear of coming face to face with him. So I just waited on the other side of the road. Then it started raining. I was wet through by the time he came out. So... Never mind, Marjorie. It's all in a good cause. Had he got somebody with him? Aye. And he was laughing. I'm not sure I'd have owned that. I haven't heard him laugh in years. Oh, he laughed all right, like he'd just heard the best joke in the world. Well, it might be a joke to him, but... Did you see what she looked like? Was she a fast-looking piece? Well, no, not exactly. A bit flashy, maybe, but well set up and smartly dressed. It was the way she hung on his arm that got me, just as if she owned him. And looking up in his face all the time. Just the thought to suck up to him and make him think he's a big man. He always did like the lasses to suck up to him as a lad. I thought he'd grown out of all that donkeys years ago. They never grow out of it. Hey, I'd never have classed all men alike before, but now... But now we know. Aye, now we know. Go on then, Marjorie. Get on with your tail. It were coming down cats and dogs by this time. She had an umbrella, but all I got was that blue raincoat of mine. 
I never bothered to have it reproofed the last time it was cleaned, and it lets the water straight through. I tell you, I'm surprised I haven't gone down with pneumonia. I was soaked through. Marjorie! I'm coming to it. They went round a corner and got into a red car. That took me by surprise, that did. I had to nip into the yard or else it would have been caught in headlights. They drove off, did they? Aye, up the Moor Road. The Moor Road? It's just like the news of the world. You don't think that they... I mean, well, no, not in a car. What? Oh, no, I shouldn't think so. It were only a mini. I'd have thought me dad were past that sort of thing. There's a lot we thought he was past. So that's all you found out? Oh, no. No, I had a brain with. I went back into the pub. On your own? Well, I thought if she can wait for me dad in pub on her own, what am I worried about? Well, you should have come home when you were so wet through and let me have it out straight with him. Nay, nee, I wasn't going to give up so easy. It's a lovely pub now, though, Bessie. You want to get Bob to take you sometime? A lovely thick carpet and nice soft pink lights. I thought, what can I order to warm me up a bit? So I had a sherry. I knew you'd make it right with me. You what? Over my expenses. There was 17 pence bus fare and 15 pence for the sherry. Why didn't you have a double brandy while you were at it? 32 pence, I owe you. Remind me. Here, yeah, there's 35. Oh, it's all right for you, Bessie, earning a wage and only yourself to keep. 32 pence makes a big hole in my housekeeping. Well, now you're three pence to good. Oh, wow, you two can fratch over a few shillings with all this going on. Look, did you find anything else out, Marjorie? And are you just talking for the sake of it? I like that. Who was it trailing all that way after him and risk getting her death of cold standing in pelting rain? It was you, Marjorie, love, and we're very grateful to you. All right, then. Where had I got to? You were in the pub, wet through, and drinking sherry on expenses. Yes, say, just get on with it, will you, Marjorie? Well, I got talking to the landlord and reckon I was waiting for a friend, for I was a bit late and might have missed her. She might have been with an elderly man in a brown overcoat, I said. Oh, he says, you mean the lady with the red mini? They're two of me Friday night regulars. I've known her for ages. She works at Burnett's. I only know that, though, he says, because she fitted my wife on. Well, I'm nodding as though I know all about it already, but I draw him out a bit more, and it turns out her name's Fairchild, and she's a corset fitter for Burnett's. Did he say how long they'd been going in the pub together? Aye, the best part of a year. A year? The old devil. Oh, I blame myself in one way. For not smelling something was wrong before this. You can't blame yourself, ma'am. He's been cunning. All his big talk about principles. I reckon he leaves them at work in his overall pocket. It might have been better if he'd left them things there and all. Nay, nee, ma'am. Well, what's to do now? I'm harder the sort to go into the crown and face him with it. You won't have to. I've seen to that. Oh, how? I thought it'd be a good idea for all of us to have a good look at her. Wear up properly. And then see what's to be done. Look at her. Now we're going to do that. What do you mean, all of us? What I say? We know where she works, don't we? And what do you expect me to do, Marjorie? Go and pull her hair out for her in Burnett's underwear department? No, Mum. We get her here. Here? What do you mean, here? Here. In this room. In fact, it's all arranged. I rang her up from phone box this morning. One of my friends recommended you, I said. I need a fitting. Do you do fittings in customers' own homes? If our customers wish it, madam, she says, very posh she is on phone, that's part of our service. But you don't need a corset. As a matter of fact, I could do with one. But I shan't get one. I've all on to afford a new pair of pants from Marks and Sparks. Anyway, she doesn't know that, does she? And when have you fixed this for, Marjorie? Seven o'clock on Monday night. I knew my dad always goes out to a meeting on Mondays. But why bring her here? It's no good at my place with all kids, is it? Don't worry, I didn't give her your address in case she knew where my dad lives. And I give her my married name. I said it were a bit tricky to find, so I'd meet her at post office and show her the way. You sure you've got the right woman? Oh, yes. Mrs. Fairchild, and she'll be in a red mini. Mrs.? She must be a widow. Divorced, more like. I don't like this. I wish we'd never started it. You didn't start it, he did. But we'll finish it. No, we shouldn't be doing this. You're not turning soft, are you, ma'am? You can't let him get away with it. I don't think this is the way. It's either find some way of warning her off or face me dad with it fair and square. And what's to stop him doing as he likes afterwards, then? Ah, you can't lock him up in the house every night. Nay, if he knew I'd found out... What? He... 
Well, it surely... Ma'am. Oh, well, happen you're right. I'd love to get back. I've got no done at home with all this. And I think I've got a call coming on. Monday night now. Don't forget. I'm hardly likely to forget. No, well. Oh, by the way, you don't think he tumbled to anything after we put them things back in his pocket, do you? I don't think so. I don't know about you, Bessie, but I can hardly wait for Monday night. Me neither. Just fancy. If she'd been on pill, we might never have known. Give over, ma'am. Give over what? You must have been rushing about dusting and cleaning all day. Anybody would think we've got the Queen coming for supper. I'd feel a lot easier if we had. Just sit down and take it easy. Has our Carol gone out yet? No, she'll be gone in a minute. She's off to pictures. I've never seen the place so tidy. You've no need to work your blood to water for the likes of her. No, but I'll feel easier in my own mind. I don't like the idea of her coming here at all. But at least I'll give her note to criticise. She won't notice. We'll be looking at her, remember. She won't have a clue who you are. Oh, I just don't know. However, I'll keep it up. All you've got to do is remember that as long as she doesn't know who you are, you've got the advantage. If you ask me, all the advantages with her. For the time being, maybe. She's free. She's younger than me. Or I suppose she is. And she has all the fun. Do you know what's hurt most of all I've heard since our Marjorie took his suit to the cleaners? What? Her telling us about the two of them coming out of that pub laughing. Ah, laughing. Over and over I've asked myself, what's he got to laugh about? He used to laugh a lot when I first knew him, but that's a long time ago. She must be somewhat special to be able to make him let himself go like that, whatever our Marjorie made of her. It's obvious what sort of woman she is. Ah, oh, not so sure. He's never been interested in women before. I'm positive. Well, he married you. Oh, is that them at the front door? No. Oh, I, I thought I heard a noise. I wish they'd come if they come in and let's get it over. They'll be here before long. Stop worrying. Now, just sit back and look relaxed. No, not as if you're going to take off and run a mile. Relax or she'll guess something's up. That can't be them. Or Margie would have brought her in. I'll see what it is. What are you doing here? Oh, can I come in? Oh, hello, Mrs. Stringer. Oh, it's you. Hi. It's only me. You, uh, you didn't come Saturday night, Bessie? No, I didn't feel like it. Oh. And I can't come out tonight. I'm busy. Oh, that's all right. In fact, it's not very convenient you being here. We're expecting a visitor. I'm not stopping. It's just that, uh, Carol said she might come with me. Carol? Where to? There's a good picture on at the ABC. We were talking about it on Saturday. Saturday? Uh, yes, you know, when, uh... When you didn't come. I bumped into her later. You, you don't mind, do you? Mind? <laughs> Why should I mind? All right, Bob. You didn't say you were going to the pictures? I told Mum. With Bob, I mean. It's not definite. Bob said he'd like to see the film, and I said I'd go with him if you didn't want to. It's up to you. I don't have to go. I can't go. I'm stopping in tonight. I'll stay if Mum wants a bit of company. No, you go. I don't like the pictures much anyway. They say it's very good. Well, then that's all settled. Are you ready, Carol? Yes. See you later. Aye. See you later. You know, you'd best be making up your mind about that young man, Bessie. There's plenty of pebbles on the beach. But not so many gold nuggets. Bob's all right, if you want my opinion. It's no good, ma'am. This business of me dad has made me even less inclined to rush into marriage. You've been engaged now for nigh on three years. That's hardly breaking your neck. I'm not engaged anymore, remember? Ah, uh, well, in that case, I reckon Bob can do just what he likes. It's all right. That's to warn us. Now, ma'am, remember what I said. Relax and act natural. Everything's on our side. She'll know nothing till we're ready to spring it on her. What do you mean, spring it on her? Nobody said anything about that. Shh! Do come in, won't you? Here we are at last then, Mother. Uh, this is Mrs. Fairchild. Good evening. And my sister, Elizabeth. I'll make the tea. I'm very sorry to be late. I got held up at the shop and I knew Mrs. Mather was waiting on the street. Oh, I'm getting accustomed to hanging about on street corners. <laughs> The children, you know. They've no idea of time. You have no children yourself, Mrs. Fairchild? No. No, I'm afraid not. 
I hope the arrangements for tonight don't seem funny to you, Mrs. Fairchild. I mean, meeting on a corner, then coming here instead of to my own house. Like a sinister plot. Oh, <laughs> I expect Mrs. Fairchild gets to funnier quarters than this on her travels. <laughs> yes, indeed. I've come to expect almost anything. Some women find buying a foundation a most intimate matter. Oh, if we hadn't thought it was an intimate matter, we shouldn't have dragged you out all this way. Uh, let me take your coat. Oh, thank you. It's a secret, you see. Oh? From my husband. I see. Married people sometimes have to deceive each other a bit, don't you think so? It depends, I should think. I don't mean about anything serious, but I want this to be a surprise for my Jim. What she means is her Jim wouldn't understand her spending money on a corset, even though it was making herself look smarter for his sake. Oh, yet it is a pity, you know, that we can't educate more men to realise what a valuable morale boost a good, properly fitted corset can be to a woman. I expect you don't have any trouble with your own husband on that score. I'm a widow. Oh. And you've not thought about getting married again? <laughs> well, thinking about it and uh, doing it are two different things. Men aren't all that easy to come by, are they? Not unless you're not very particular. And I'm afraid I must be. Then again, there's no accounting for other people's tastes, is there? Oh, that's true. You'll have a cup of tea. <sighs> It'll be very welcome. When I have an evening call, I don't eat till late. Do you work in the evenings a lot? Oh, it varies. It'll upset your social life, I expect. Well, it does lead to difficulties sometimes, but one's livelihood must come first, mustn't it? Oh, yes. Especially with a woman on her own. Yes. Now, did you have anything particular in mind, Mrs. Mather? What? Oh, for a foundation, you mean? Have you a, a special problem like bosom control, midriff bulge, to, to full development in the hips or buttocks? Sad flesh is my main problem. Oh? My husband always used to say I got lovely springy flesh when I first married him, but I lost that when I had my family. Now when he touches me, his finger marks seem to linger for ages, like when you squeeze a lump of putty. I've never heard you mention that before, Marjorie. It's true, though. I'm afraid a foundation won't exactly cure that. No. Nevertheless, the right type can work wonders in small ways. A little support and separation here, a little smoothing out and shaping there, and one's clothes look so much better on one. Your frock fits beautifully, Mrs. Fairchild. Do you wear a foundation? A one-piece lightweight, yes. I thought your figure couldn't be all your own at your age. No. I am quite proud of what nature and willpower have managed on their own. But Anno Domini catches up with all of us, and a little assistance is a great help. Now, perhaps I can show you a few things from the range we handle. Uh, something like this, perhaps? It comes in several colours. Oyster, flesh, pink and black. It's a bit on the heavy side, isn't it? I don't want trussing up like a chicken. Oh, you'd find perfect freedom of movement. But perhaps this? I don't think so, do you, Mother? Well, I agree that you don't seem to need a lot of support. Just something to hold you naturally. You... Couldn't show me yours, could you? It may not be just what you'd like. Oh, but it's so much better to see one actually worn. If you'd like us to leave you, Mrs. Fairchild, oh, we'll Oh, there's no need for that. I've modelled foundations. In front of mixed audiences? Oh, occasionally. Professionally mixed. Most laymen seem to be embarrassed by such occasions. As if a woman in a corset weren't more covered than in most modern swimsuits. Shall I help you with your zip? Oh, oh well, all right. It's a lovely frock, isn't it, Bessie? Lovely. Here, I'll hold it for you. Now, this is rather an expensive model, but of course I can buy at a discount. Uh, would you like me to take up the slip? If you wouldn't mind, then we can see it properly. Hello. We're back earlier than we thought. Oh! Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you'd be out for hours yet. There was a queue a mile long. So we just came straight back. I'm sorry if we've interrupted. No, no. Only I were planning a surprise for Jim. Lucky, Jim. Mrs. Fairchild's measuring me for a corset. It looks as if you were measuring her. Um, we're obviously in the way. Um, we're going to have a cup of coffee for half an hour. Ah, that's right. Mrs. Fairchild won't be long now. It's, uh, it's like a rehearsal for a French farce. <laughs> well, uh, uh, good night, Mrs. Stringer. We'd best be going. Stringer? That's, uh... Not a very common name. Not till you started making it so. Mum. Nay, Marjorie, it's too late for that now. I'm Gladys Stringer, to me friends. Not that I count you amongst them. I see. 
So all this was planned. Is that all you've got to say? If it was necessary to lure me here by such a mean and deceitful trick, why didn't you say who you were before? Mean and deceitful? You've some room to talk. We wanted to have a good look at you. Ah, I see what sort of a woman my dad was jeopardising his marriage for. And to tell you to keep away from him. I should think he's got a say in that matter. Why him? What do you mean? Oh, I know men can't be all that easy to come by for a woman of your age. <sighs> But you're presentable enough, even if you are rotten underneath all your makeup and your fine feathers. Couldn't you found somebody better than him? <sighs> well, if that's all you think of Luther, no wonder he went looking elsewhere. You haven't answered my question. Because he's a man of considerable charm, character and principle. Principle? And he's good company. He's as miserable as a wet Monday. To you, perhaps, but not to me. Well, miserable or not, madam, he's not seeing you again. Has he said so? We've said so. Well, I'll wait to hear it from him. And I don't see why I should discuss the matter with you. If anybody, it's between your mother and me. Now, if I can have my dress, I'll leave you. You'll go nowhere till you promise to leave him alone. I've already told you I won't. Not if I black your eyes, you'll think again. Marjorie, leave it be. Let her go. It's gone far enough. Not for me, it hasn't. My dress, if you please. You'll get no dress from me. You can go home undressed. Like the oh. part, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Marjorie, please. Oh, oh. You shouldn't have done that, Marjorie. You'll only make it worse and fill the neighbours' mouths. Let them see. It'll let them shame him into doing right. Just you go and give her a dress and a coat. I won't. Hey, what are you shouting about? You might well ask. Well, mother? I'm not your mother. I'm your wife if you did but remember. What's got into everybody? Does this coat mean anything to you? Have you had a visitor? You could say that. I wouldn't have thought it. Oh, don't let her spoil your little dream of love. She didn't call on us. We asked her here. So you did know. Well, what's her coat doing here now? She left it behind. Left it? She left this as well. Her frock? But what, what the hell's been going on here? What devilment have you been up to? I was going to give it to her, but I think you better take it yourself. You little bitch. What the hell's it got to do with you? You shouldn't have done that, Bessie. No, Bessie, you bloody shouldn't. Well, don't bother I'll make sure you don't get a chance to humiliate her again. Where is she now? On front doorstep. On the doorstep with her? Aye, you needn't be bashful. She's been sitting in her underclothes before. She'd be stark naked if I had my way. Do you try to let her in? I won't, don't you fret. I'll see she goes. And I'm going with her. Well, then, that's shown them. Hey, Marjorie, Bessie, you shouldn't have done it. You want your cup filling, Carol? No, thanks. Right, I'll clear away then. What about Bessie? She's stopping behind a while, so she'll have something at work. You stay where you are then. I'll do it. Aren't you going back to college before Easter? I might go back for a day or two. All these days away from your studies, they're wasted. Oh, Mum, I couldn't have gone back and concentrated on work. Not with all this going on. I wanted to see something settled. Well, isn't it? You know very well it isn't. There hasn't been a sensible word said in all of it. Just shouting and injured pride and everybody licking their wounds. And what would you like to see? I'd like to see a bit of quiet discussion without tempers flaring and everybody getting on their eye horse. I should have thought I could be excused a bit of injured pride and getting on my eye horse. Oh, that's natural. But it won't solve anything, will it? Who do you think you're punishing? Him or yourself? I mean, presumably he wanted that woman and now he's gone off with her. After what happened here that night, he'd no option, had he? Look, it wasn't me that got her to come here, nor pushed her out on doorstep. No, it wasn't. So why don't you stop talking like Bessie and Marjorie and speak for yourself? And what am I supposed to say? Do you want him to come back? <sighs> he wanted somebody else. Now he's gone off with her. Why should he come back? Because I've asked him to. You what? I asked him to come and have a talk about it anyway. And when did all this happen? Last night. You saw your father last night? How did you find out where he was? I phoned Mrs. Fairchild at the shop. Oh, sounds very easy, does that? I phoned Mrs. Fairchild at the shop. What do you want me to say? She's the woman he's living with. You make her sound like a friend. I phoned her, and she told me that she'd arranged for me to meet him. Oh, very kind of her. And I did, in the station buffet. Was she with him? No. And what did he have to say for himself? Hardly anything. Well, that's a novelty. 
I think he was embarrassed to discuss it with me. So, it's not completely beyond redemption. Oh, Mother, it's no use his coming if you're not going to talk to each other like two civilised human beings. Did he say he'd come? Well, no, not exactly. He said he'd think about it. Right. I'll expect him when I see him then. And I'll decide what I'm going to say to him at the same time. Hello? Can I come in? Oh, who's this? Sounds like Bob. Oh, hello, Mrs. Stringer. Carol? I hope, uh, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Well, you're in now, whether you are or not. Mm. Our Bessie's working over. Yes, I know. I wondered if you'd heard the news about Crosslands. What news is that? They're talking about laying 150 men off. Transferring one whole process to Northumberland. They've called the union in to discuss redundancy. Does it affect you, Bob? Oh, aye. And your dad. We'll both be out of work before long. So, he's out of a job as well. How the mighty have fallen. I'll be back in a while. I'm just going round to our Marjorie's. What if me dad arrives? You just have to wait, that's all. I expect he has to hang about for his fancy piece sometimes, so he'll be used to it. Mother! Has, uh, has anybody seen him since he left? I did, last night. Oh. Would he talk to you? He didn't say much. Did Bessie tell you what happened? Why? Well, with full details. Her and Marjorie, by crikey. They could have done it, they'd have flogged that woman naked through village. All outraged virtue. All getting their own back for years of your dad's domineering. Don't think I don't know. Your Bessie worked herself up so much telling me about it, I thought she was going to have an orgasm. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have said that. We're both grown-up people. And friends. Friends? Aye. I suppose you and your friends at college say pretty much what you like to one another. Well, we try to have honest discussions without keeping half the facts under the carpet. I've enjoyed having you two. We've never seen so much of each other or talked so much before. No, we haven't. I've enjoyed it as well. What did you mean about Bessie Bob? Do you mean she's cold? Cold? Set in her ways. Without imagination, that's Bessie. And you couldn't have set to her what you just said to me, about having an orgasm. Hmm. She'd very likely have clouted me across the face. And we're engaged to be married. Or oh, we were. Oh, I don't know. I know one thing, though. I've got the wrong sister. Just because sh she might not be right for you, I mean, doesn't mean that... Well, oh. say what you mean, love. You said yourself we're friends. Yeah, well... That's just it. We are friends, Bob. And it's been fun. Aye. Aye, I'll go back to college and I'll find myself another job and uh, one of these days we'll pass on the street and you'll say to your university boyfriend, look, there's the chap that used to be engaged to my sister. Look, I'm sorry about this, Bob. I had no idea. Oh, how could you have? Never mind. And it really is all over between you and Bessie. Oh, I. She doesn't know it yet, but it is. Look, if I thought I was coming between oh, you... Oh, no, no, you haven't. I've told you about Bessie. I knew it long since, but... It needed you and all this business with your dad to make me really see what a big mistake I was walking into. Well, I don't suppose you've got time to think about what you're going to do when you leave Crosslands, I mean. I've been studying accountancy at night. I shall get another job, some sort of job, and uh, carry on with that until I get some qualifications. It'll be worse for your dad, though, finding something else at his age. How's he taken the news? Has he said anything, or is he still not talking to you? Well, I haven't seen him, love. He hasn't been to work for the last three days. That's not like him, is it? No, it isn't. I've always thought that even if he had a broken leg, he'd hobble to work on crutches. <laughs> and soon there won't be any work. Yeah. Is that someone coming in? Hmm? Hello, Carol. Hello, Bob. Dad. Oh, you've come. Oh, I am glad. Is there only you two in? Mum's round at Marjorie's. Bob will keep you company, and I'll go and fetch you. And then we'll make ourselves scared. All right. Luther, I know you don't want to talk to me, but... What do you mean? Well, I, I suppose you'd rather pretend I wasn't here. Would I? Well, I'm in Coventry, remember? Oh, nay, that's all forgotten. I've got other things to think about. Oh. Yes, I suppose so. And life's too short to go on bearing a grudge. Thanks. I'll not pretend I'm not pleased to have another man to talk to as well. <laughs> Me neither. Hey, look, I I'm sorry about the other night. What do you mean? Well, I did try to warn you. 
How could you know? I overheard the whole story about your suit going to the cleaners. Oh, I should have known that your Marjorie and Bessie were cooking up something nasty for you. Did you, by God? Aye. Well, you did try. Ah, oh, don't worry, there was nothing you could have done. Uh, what do you got to say about it all, then? Nothing. Nothing? Oh, you must have an opinion, haven't you? Yeah, well, it's perhaps best kept to myself. Well, that makes a change, isn't it, Rod? <laughs> oh, I'm a disgrace, lad, aren't I? A disgrace to my wife, my daughters, and to myself. But I don't care. I don't damn well care. Have you, uh, have you heard the news about Crosland's? Aye, it's in tonight's paper. Well, aren't you bothered about it? What can I do about it? Oh, I don't know. I, I just thought you'd not feel like taking it lying down. Nay, lad, I know when cards are down like anybody else. You buy the system when you're born into it. By the time you've reached the age where you can think for yourself, that's if you ever do. It's all gone so deep, you've not just economic survival to contend with. You're kicking again morality and all. And we're still bringing up young'uns the same way. Look at our Bessie. She's one of my own, and I must be as much to blame as anybody. But for all her sharp tongue and her, her noise about thinking for herself, she's as big a bloody zombie as ever walked the face of this earth. Mm. Now, they call them programs that they put into computers, don't they? Well, our Bessie's programmed right down to the grave. Mm. And then there's our Marjorie. She's like not so much as a contented sow lying in her own muck with a litter crawling round her. Have you ever been inside her house? No. I've never seen it yet when it didn't look like a tip. By God, but this business might have gone a bit different if them two hadn't stuck their oars in. You bring your bairns into the world, raise them and protect them, and before you know where you are, you need protecting from them. <laughs> Any road, what does it matter how it comes out, eh? It's still wrong in the beginning, isn't it? I don't know. You don't? Wonders never cease. I found somebody who doesn't think I'm the biggest dirty dog since Bluebeard. Well, it depends on what you do now, doesn't it? Ah, ah, now we're getting to it. Well, let's say it depends what you want. I want some I can't bloody well have, that's what I want. I want things like they were before anybody found out. Ah, I see. Uh, I've cut the under, lad. <laughs> ah, you have. Thought I were past it, did you? Well, I didn't think you were the type. Oh, there's a type, is there? Oh, I don't know, but I never thought you were it. Thirty years, plodding nicely along, and, and then I go and break out like this. You know, I, I'd rather cut myself. <laughs> what do I want to go rocking boat for at my age? And I wouldn't, you know, if I hadn't met young woman. I'd a card quiet and, and just battered me time out. Hmm. I can see the day when you car quiet, Luther. Oh, that puts a lot of value on on a bit of shout and blether, lad. And I noticed, the further I open my mouth, the plainer it is I've no teeth left. It wasn't always like that. There was a time when I could bite and draw blood. Well, that's a long time ago, and I've, I've been taking it lying down for years. And then I met Anne. Ah, marriage is a funny thing. It can start off with... As wholesome and appetizing as fresh baked bread. And then it gradually turned into last week's mouldy loaf. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm I'm fond of Bessie's mother. She she's put up with me for thirty-two years, and I'll be first to admit I'm I've not always been the easiest man in the world to live with. <laughs> but, but but what does she want of me now? Somebody to to, to bring away, John. Put a shelf up. Uh, Help with decorating, keep bed warm in cold weather. Somebody to talk to. Nay, she talks more to our Bessie and Marjorie than she ever talks to me. Ah, oh, perhaps you don't listen. Perhaps I don't, and perhaps I'm not bloody interested. And I don't think she is either. She used to look at me having politics like another wife might look at her husband drinking too much or suffering from fits. Oh, it were a nuisance, and it cost me jobs. She didn't complain, or not often, but... But neither did she show any sign of understanding. Or well, does this, uh, this Mrs. Furchild understand? I don't know. But you feel she's, she's interested. She, she takes all of you and, 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 and wants to know what makes you tick. I've got shock of my life when I met Anne and, and she took notice of me. Hey, you were flattered. God bloody was. And what's wrong with that? For the first time in 30 years, I began a, a close relationship with another human being. By God, Bob, I, I can't tell you how I felt. 
And if you want to know why I didn't stop and consider what I was doing, I'll tell you. I knew what I was doing, and King Dick wouldn't have stopped me. She must be a marvellous woman. Ah, oh, don't talk too wet. She's neither marvellous woman nor the kind of slut our Bessie and Marjorie had make her out to be. She's a, a warm, intelligent human being that happens to be able to give me things I can't get anywhere else. And what's more, the things I've got to have. Oh, there's nobody can stop you having them, Luther. No. Nobody except myself. Aye. So what are you going to do, then? Does I think I can deny myself? Do you think you can deny your conscience? Well, the way I see things now, there's two choices. Pack me things, or total surrender. And that's what's come of them two lasses and their meddling. Ooh, I've had my eyes opened in the last few days. I'll not say I didn't bring a lot on myself, but by God, I never realised what a, a nest of vipers I'd raised. And they're all enjoying the situation, by young Carol. Aye. Anyway, thou knows now what's waiting for thee if thy ever dares to fly the kite. Oh, I shan't get married with that intention. Who well, does, lad? It takes a funny sort of fella to go in for all that lying and deceit for fun of it. But I'll tell thee summat. Though she is my own daughter, I, I'll be a Dutchman if our Bessie's all a lad like thee needs. Thou knows that, does thou? Uh, maybe I do. So why don't you tell her? Ah, uh, your Bessie and me are not on very good terms just now. I don't think we'll be getting wet. Well, how's that, then? Well, partly because of you, Luther, and partly because, well, as she put it, I tried to take liberties with it. Did you, by now, God? Now, it was not like that, really, Luther, I, I can assure you. I don't want you thinking... Oh, I know what I think. I reckon if our Bessie thought artificial insemination were going to become the thing, she'd hang on another year or two and do we have to chap altogether. Nay, Luther, that's a bit hard. Yeah, I am so. After all, artificial insemination don't bring a wage home every week or dig garden over. Yeah, this lot's making me sourer than ever. And there was a time not so long since when I thought, well, I thought I was going to turn all mellow in me old age. Hmm. That'll be the day. Ah, uh, oh, well, the way I look at it, Bob, I've got about five good years left, maybe six or seven if I'm lucky. Out after that is just hanging about like that poor bloody dog in there hoping I shan't make a nuisance of myself. The question is, how am I going to spend them? Aye. Ah, oh, well. I'll just go and uh, get some things together. Eh, dear. Hello, Bessie. Hello, Bessie. It's two days since we met, and that's all you've got to say? Well, no, I've, uh, I've quite a lot to say, but this doesn't seem to be the right time. I see. I have to wait until you're ready. No, I didn't say that. They say you'll be out of a job by the end of the month. Aye. Aye, I expect so. And what are you going to do about it? Oh, I don't know. And at the moment, I don't care. I'm just glad to be rid of that factory. And what about us? Have you thought about that? Yes, I have. Have you noticed anything? What? I'm wearing your ring again. Ah, well, uh, that's something else we'll have to talk about. What do you mean? Look, Bessie, you took that ring off because you'd had enough of me. Now, you can't put it back on as if nothing had happened. Well, as far as I'm concerned, nothing has. Are you saying you won't marry me? I'm saying we'll just have to talk things over calmly. You're trying to wriggle out of it, but you won't. I'll see you don't. Oh, that's it, is it? A fine bloody idea you've got about marriage if you think people have to be forced into it against their will. You've had nearly three years of my life. And I thought we were sharing. Well, I should have known better. One thing I'm glad about. I'm glad I didn't let you get me into bed. So am I, love. So am I. Where is it? Getting angry won't help anything. Where's who? Me dad. Have you seen him, Bob? Uh, yes, I've seen him. Why didn't you tell me? We only exchanged two words. Oh, you men. You'll stick together. You women don't do so bad. Where is he now, then? He's gone. Oh, damn. If my mum had told me as soon as she came in, I could have caught him. What for? What do you think for? To tell him what I think about him. I thought you'd already done that. You're in a clever mood tonight, aren't you? Am I? Mother, Bob says he's gone. Gone? But he's only just arrived, hasn't he, Carol? Well, um... 
What are you two signalling about? Is there something going on between you? No, there isn't. I'm sorry to say. You're sorry? What are you sorry about? Don't bother. I, I didn't want to say anything tonight in front of everybody, but it seems to be the only way to do things in this house. So I'll tell you, Bessie. I prefer your Carol to you, but she won't have me. So that's what's been going on behind my back. You've only yourself to blame, Bessie. You've been playing fast and loose with Bob for long enough. I don't expect my own sister to make up to me fiancé. Bessie! She hasn't made up to me, I've told you. She doesn't want me. She doesn't want me, and I don't want you. So that's all I get for all these years, is it? A polite goodbye. Do you think you can cast me off as easy as that? Better now than later. You think yourself lucky he's found out in time. I'll thank you to keep out of this, Mother. And I'll thank you to keep out of this business with your father. You and our Marjorie and all. If I hadn't been for me, you'd have never have known. Aye, and I might have been a damn sight better off not knowing. What have I got now for all me knowing except a belly full of flaming righteous indignation? And all through your damn meddling. Well, that's a fine thing. Blame us now. At least they've made sure you know you're in the right, Mrs. Stringer. Like the fellow that got knocked down on the zebra crossing. Who asked you for your opinion? I asked him. Only he wouldn't give it to me. Why, Bob, you rotten liar. You knew he was still here. That's right, Bessie, he did. What makes you think you've a right to know every damn thing that goes on in this house? Because my mum needs friends, that's why. Uh, one thing's certain, with friends like you and our Marjorie, she doesn't need any bloody enemies. She's got them, though, hasn't she, with you and that woman? If your mam and me are not enemies already, it's no fault of your spiteful tongue. That's right. Blame everybody but yourself. If you played fair, none of this would have happened. Please, played Marjorie. fair? Oh, we're playing games now, are we? Well, I'll tell you how next round's going to be played. It starts with Bob taking Bessie out of here and for a walk down the street. He's got something to tell you. He's already told me. Well, listen to him while he tells you again. An appen message will sink in this time. I'm not going anywhere until You're I You're going out of here inside next 60 seconds. And if I hear another word out of you, I'll tip you over because you're in time you're out. Luther, remember the neighbours. Ah, oh, by God, I'd forgotten about them. We ought to get them in and ask for their opinion, didn't we? Or do you think we might get to know what you and me think? Because we haven't yet, have we? We all know what my mum thinks. No, we bloody don't. All we know is what you tell us you ought to think. What all decent people think. Decent people? Aye, decent people. People who don't carry them things in their pockets. I bet you your gym didn't. What do you mean? Everyone knows I'll carry him a premature. I didn't know that. Join the club, lad. I've nothing to reproach myself for. Oh, it must be marvellous to be so flaming righteous. I've always lived a clean and decent life. Clean? Have you ever really looked at your eyes? Or haven't you had time for poking your nose into what don't concern you? My mother concerns me. And a fine way you have of showing it, stirring things up. Oh, I can just see you standing there outside that pub in pouring rain. Key old key. Call him. What me. were you thinking about as you stood there? How much were you thinking about your mother then? I'll bet you were having a right old gloat. Oh, I've got something on the old devil at last. Aye. Well, you've had your fun. Now you can have your marching orders. Get back down the street and see to your own. When I saw young Kevin last week, he was he was scratching like he had nits. That's not I'll Marjorie. Don't you come with me, you butcher! Come on, Marjorie. Come on. come on. There's nothing you can do here. Just come on, never want to set eyes on him again. You as well, our Bessie. I'll uh I'll wait for you outside, Bessie. I don't need you to wait for me. Oh, uh, just as you like. Goodbye, Mrs. Stringer, Luther. I hope, uh, I hope things turn out all right. Cheerio, Bob. Bye, Carol. See you around. Yeah, bye, Bob. Aye, so long, lad. Be good. You're a daft bitch, Bessie. I beg your pardon? Trying to make a doormat out of a chap like him. That pride of yours will be poor company for you in your old age. At least I'll be able to rely on it, which is more than I can say for most men I've seen. I'll go upstairs. I've told you before about getting worked up like that. You'll have a stroke before you've finished. It'll take more than them to finish me off. So, you've come back. Has she had enough of you? I've not been living with her, if that's what you mean. Oh, no, of course. She'd have a reputation to consider. There's a difference between 
visiting a woman living on her own and staying several nights. I wouldn't have thought such niceties would have bothered her. That's only part on it. One thing marriage has taught me, when two people live together, they put chains round one another. And what's point in throwing off one set, only to put another lot on? I suppose it's all right in theory. I thought if you cared about somebody, you'd want to live with them, get to know them. Well, we've lived together for over 30 years, and a fat lot we know about each other. You didn't even know I was having an affair for the past year till our Marjorie found out. So I'm to blame for that, am I? I'm to blame for your cunning in hiding it. How was I supposed to notice when there's been nothing like that in our lives since our Carol was born? Tell me you've been off with dozens of women, and I'm stupid for not noticing. Eh, hey, you selfish Luther. Happen that's how it looks. Well, I don't know what you've got in mind, but if you'll agree not to see that woman again, I'm willing to have you back. But you'll have to patch things up with our Marjorie and Bessie. I can't stand family squabbles. Patch things up with them two? They're your own flesh and blood, Luther, and you are in the wrong. Does that give them the right to behave like savages? It's their way. And there's plenty round here who'd back them in what they did. Aye, I'd happen to have laughed myself if it had been somebody else. And if we've only moved that far out at Cave, I must be as much to blame as anybody because I helped to bring them up. I've been doing it wrong for years. I've known it. I've, I've watched myself. Because for the life in me, I somehow couldn't do it right. And it's been killing me. There comes a time when you realise that that you on your own can't cure your mistakes. You can't wipe them out because you've, you've bred them into somebody else's bones. The parade in front of you every day, taunting you. And, and when you rile at them, they answer you back. Aye. Aye, I'm in wrong, all right. And them two have only one thought in their heads. To beat me to my knees till I crawl back here and eat dirt for the rest of my days. And you won't do that? I will not. So, what is there left to talk about? Is that what you want and all, Gladys? I just hoped you might be able to see it different. And if I can't? You're not much good to me like that. No. I thought not. Well, they're going to have to let me go, aren't they, lass? There's no letting here. You know where door is. Hey, but I, I dislike seeing they like this. Not enough, though, eh? I never wanted it to come to this. You shouldn't have been so careless, then. Well, maybe at bottom of I, I did want it to come out. I, I couldn't really abide the way I were carrying on. No, it's not your way, is it? No, it's not my way. I've always liked having things stand out in the open, whether it offended folk or not. Well, you've offended me. Aye, I know, but... But, you see, time's getting on, and and the summit, it seems that I must have. And yon woman's got it. I think she can... she can point way for me. I see. Uh, I'll see you get your money. Don't worry about that. You'll be needing another job? Oh, there'll be a bit of redundancy pay to tide me over. Oh, I shall be down at the post office first thing tomorrow to see about my share of that account. Well, that's your right. Aye. So, you're going to pack your things? I've done already. Cases, bit kitchen door. When will you be back for the rest? I've got all I need. There's not that much that's personal belongings when you think about it. Oh, you, you won't be coming back. No, it's best not. You'll be wanting to be off then? I don't like to leave you like this. No. I dare say you won't find it as easy to walk through that door as you did the last time. I couldn't have left it like that, though. Besides, you needed your things. Well, give us a bit of credit, love. I shall miss you. We've had a, a good long innings. And in less than a fortnight, it's all over. Well, you'd best get off. Hanging about here, talking sentimental, won't make it any easier. Ah, well, you, you'll be all right. You'll, you'll have the house and, and your money. You'll be our bestie for company, and our Marjorie popping round like she always done. All you'll miss is my bad temper, and you'll soon get over that. Oh, just go, will you? Get yourself out. Just leave me be and go. So long, then. 
Take care. I, uh... I I'll drop you a line. He's gone, then. Yeah. It, it says it won't be coming back. It didn't do any good, then. He's trying to get you together. Doesn't look like it, does it? You did talk, though, didn't you? I mean, it wasn't just recrimination. Oh, no. There were a few hard words. I did call him selfish once. Well, that's that. I... I don't know how you can sit there so... In and talk about it so calmly as if you didn't care. Because I've got no option, lass. And your father in his own way had none either. What good's a fella that's had his nose rubbed in it? I don't want a man at any price. I can remember your father when he was a fighting cock, when he stood up for what he believed in high and he suffered for it and all. Did you ever understand what all that was about? No. No, not really. It always seemed to me that... We could have had a pleasant life if only he'd curb himself a bit. But I was his wife, and understand him or not, it was my place to make an home for him. Until he was tired of it and fancied something else. Where's that understanding we were talking about before? What does it amount to? Me forgiving him and him coming back? Is that as far as it goes? I wanted to see you work something out. We have worked it out. He's gone. For now. For now? You don't think he's gone for good, then? Nay, all's not over between your father and me. I know a thing or two about him that yon other woman doesn't. And there'll come a time when he'll need that. Oh, it's all right her saying she wants him to be free. Not to put any more chains on, as she calls it. But that's what a relationship between a man and a woman is. A man wants a place where he can come home. Not talking much, maybe. But with somebody there to see to his needs. And your father's lived too long like that to settle to any other way. Our Marjorie says that woman makes him laugh. But nobody laughs forever. He'll be back. I can remember when your grandfather, my father, used to come in from pit, bone weary and black as night. And your grandmother used to lay a lot of water into the sink from fireside boiler. And then he'd strip to waist and brace himself with his hand on the sink while she washed his back. All with hardly a word. But that's the sort of thing a mother does for her sons. Aye, lass. But you've still got a lot to learn about men. That was Strayer's Last Stand by Stan Barstow and Alfred Bradley. Gladys was played by Avis Bunnage, Luther, Ronald Baddeley, Bessie, Janet Dale, Bob... Alan Rothwell, Marjorie, Maggie McCarthy, Carol, Sylvia Brescher, Anne, Beth Harris, and Jack, Graham Roberts. The play was produced in Leeds by Tony Cliff. Tonight's play on Radio 4 is called The Smaller Sky and has been adapted from the novel by John Wayne. It's about a scientist who finds the pressure of his ordinary life intolerable and so goes to live on Paddington Station where he thinks he can find peace. I'm perfectly calm. Since I've lived on the station, I've been perfectly calm. Away from the sound of those drums. Lord, those drums, I used to hear something in my head. Both a sound and a vibration. Sometimes as though they were being softly stroked, and then muffled, and then beaten very hard and very fast. A number of times in the early morning I've lain awake with Elizabeth sleeping beside me, with the drums thundering away like frenzy, wondering how the sound didn't wake her. No. I feel peaceful. But I must get back to the station soon. Hugh Dixon plays the scientist, and Robert Lang plays a television interviewer who hunts him down in his retreat in The Smaller Sky on Radio 4 at 8 o'clock this evening. This is BBC Radio 4.
25 to 5. 